Magic is universal and everyone understands it. I don't have to say a word. Traveling through this worrisome land. If this is the year of magic in the college, there's one person who has to come and speak, and that's Tom Werner. Tom, just like myself, a tenured faculty member at Burlington College for 35 years, but a lover of magic, who had a vision for a new direction in life <laughs> after being in Kosovo in 2001 and performing magic for the people there. And since then, Tom and his wife, Janet Fredericks, have been the founders of Magicians Without Borders, an absolutely unbelievable organization that I'll let you find out about from Tom. But he's worked all over the world against poverty, suffering of all kinds, and teaching them the impossible is possible. Empowerment, uh, use of the imagination and creativity to make the world a better place. I should also mention Tom's recent book, of which he's the co-author, The Transformational Power of Dreaming, Discovering the Wishes of the Soul. So without any more ado, I'll introduce Tom Berger. First of all, for all of you coming, thank you very much. And I'm really honored to be here at Fordham. What I'm going to do tonight is to talk a little bit about this organization that my wife Janet Fredericks and I started tw almost 20 years ago. And without her, I definitely don't think given up my career as a college professor and started just this mad, wonderful adventure. We perform a lot for people who don't have a home, refugees and orphans. We just recently have been down on the border to some of the detention centers that are holding children. We perform on both sides of the border because those people have had long journeys, horrendous situations. One thing for sure, it opens our hearts. They've all been wonderful experiences. There are these extraordinary heroic stories of people who, as that statue says out there in the harbor, are yearning to breathe free. That's all they want. The Inuit says, in the very earliest of times, when both people and animals lived together on the earth, a person could become an animal, and an animal could become a human being. No difference, because they all spoke the same language. But that was a time when the human mind had mysterious powers. A word spoken by chance might have strange consequences. It would suddenly come alive. And what you wanted to happen could happen. All you had to do was say it origin story of Magicians Without Borders. And in some ways it has a kind of mythic quality to it. Right after the World Trade Center was demolished, that horrible time, a month later I was in Eastern Europe. And through an amazing, synchronistic, magical constellation of circumstances, I ended up in the refugee camps in Kosovo. This was the very first time I had ever been in a refugee camp. The UN man who was driving me, he said to me, I'm going to introduce you in a few moments to your guide who will be helping you with any of your needs during your magic shows. Her name is Fatima, and she knows everybody in Momen Kotak. And strangely, she's only six years old. They go over to this little hovel of a house. There was a piece of corrugated metal leaning against it. There was the door. And we rattled on it. And a moment later, this beautiful, big, brown-eyed Roma face appeared. So she was with me all day. End of the time there comes. We've done a few shows. Uh, 
Fatima standing beside me. I'm talking to some Roma women, and I say goodbye, and I turn to say goodbye to Fatima, and she's gone. So I pick up my magic suitcase, I walk over to the car, I look in, there's Fatima, laying on the floor <laughs> in the back, hiding, wanting to run away with the circus and escape moment Pope. Well, the Roma women came over, they spoke with her, she took her best shot, it didn't work, and she waved us down the road with a big smile. So we drive on, and we come to a town called uh, Shutka. This town is swollen with refugees. It's a difficult place right now. They need some magic in Shutka. So I do the show, goes well, and this Roma woman comes up to me, a wild, wonderful looking woman with a big head wrap, and she's holding a small five dinner Macedonian gold coin. She drops it in my hand, and somehow I knew it was not a tip. She points to it. She says, make more money. <laughs> so I reached into my pocket. I got some magic dust. I sprinkled it on her little five dinner. And I squeezed it, and there was a 50 dinner Macedonian gold coin. Ten times what she had given me. She was tickled pink, as my old Irish grandma would say. I dropped it in her hand and she left. Instantly, two of these Roman men <laughs> say simultaneously, make us visas to America. <laughs> and I laughed, like you. And I looked, they were completely serious. They had just seen magic. 99% of the people I performed for did not understand a word of English. They all understood magic, that magic was this universal language. And then I realized that Fatima saw magic. And somehow she thought, I can escape this refugee camp. Those Roma men saw magic. And they thought, ah, maybe we can go to America and realize their hopes and dreams. And I thought about another refugee. He came to America from Hungary in the late 19th century, fleeing the pogroms. This boy, Eric Weiss, starts studying magic. And he gets to be 16, he's pretty good. Eric Weiss says, I'm going to be the most famous magician of the 20th century. And I'm going to call myself Houdini. And Houdini once said, he said, when I perform my magic, especially people in poor, difficult situations can awaken hope that the impossible is possible are the two cornerstones of Magicians Without Borders. To use the art of magic to entertain, educate, and empower forgotten people, especially children around the world. Probably have been in El Salvador now 30 times. That started something. It started us, and we now have six groups of kids around the world that were using magic and we're teaching them magic. Really what we were teaching was not primarily magic, but self-confidence and discipline and focus and self-esteem. So what started happening with these kids who were dirt, dirt poor, started having dreams and a young woman, one of our magic students, Wendy, she's now a geriatric nurse. She was making $1.25 in the market, her and her mother selling beans. Now she's making a real living. Ryan Bart went, got a Fulbright scholarship to Columbia. He started Magicians Without Borders magic project in Bogota. And one of his first students was a 12-year-old just took to the magic and did really, really well and graduated from high school. And then she wanted to go to college. She's now just about to begin her MSW to become a social worker and it's just uh, wonderful. And Marie, I just want to give a big round of applause. So 
set up this scholarship fund that helps make these dreams of the kids in our program in Brazil, in Colombia, in El Salvador, in Costa Rica, and two programs in India makes these dreams come true. I would encourage all of you to imagine is how can you take something that you really love doing, it could be anything, to make the world a better place and not just earn a living but make a life also. So as Houdini said, sometimes magic not only amazes and amuses, but it can awaken hope that the impossible is possible. So thank you very much. Traveling through this worrisome land I've got a home in that yonder city And it's not